Hi everybody, welcome to a brand new lecture of the Ankit Faria Certified Ethical Hacker course. Up until now, we have discussed a very interesting step that every hacker must take, which is to identify the victim and get more information about the victim. So in the previous two lectures, we've actually learned how you can find out somebody else's IP address. Not only using one technique, but multiple techniques we have already seen. I hope all of you have practiced it and tested it out on your friends. I'm sure you may have faced some problems as well, but hopefully the explanations that I've given to you, the theory that I've explained to you, would have been more than adequate for you to understand when you're getting the internal IP address of your friend and when you're getting the external IP address of the friend. Then we also discuss how you can hide your IP address uh, using various uh, different platforms like proxy servers, VPNs, HTTP tunneling, and so on. Now today, we'll be moving on to the second most important step that every criminal must take whenever he or she wants to hack into a computer, which is network reconnaissance and information gathering. So that's going to be the main topic of today's lecture. But before I actually start with the main topic, I like to actually do some assignments. So if you remember, we had actually discussed something known as email header analysis and how to find out the IP address of the person who sent an email to you. Now, one of the most commonly found threats or commonly found cyber crimes in India is that the CEO of a large company or a big politician receives an abusive email. And typically the abusive email has been sent from some free web-based email account like Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo and so on. And the problem is since it's a free web-based email account uh, service provider, anybody, any kind of criminal can just go online, create some fake dummy account and then use that to send these abusive emails to prominent people. And then once those emails are received, typically uh, the victim will go to the uh, cyber cell uh, of the police department and register a complaint. But then the police uh, is not really too sure as to how to trace the email back and so on. So imagine the following scenario. Once you're done with this AFCH course, one fine day, you get a phone call. And when you answer that phone call, it is the local police department. And they ask you to come to the police station. And once you go there, they actually tell you that they have come across three or four different emails and they want your help to trace those emails back and to identify the IP address of the person who sent those emails out and to also try and identify the location and maybe the ISP of the person who sent those emails. So I'll try to share with you, I'd like to share with you a few email headers and then we, I'll take you through step by step what exactly you need to do. If you ever need to trace an email back or do any kind of email header analysis. So let me quickly switch to my laptop and I'll share with you the email headers one by one and then we will try to trace those email headers back. So the first email header has been displayed on the screen now. And if you look at the email header, typically it has, you know, lines with that start with delivered to, received, X received, return path, and so on. So these email headers are basically the properties of the email that was sent and you need to analyze these email headers to try and identify where the email originated. So if you remember there are two ways of doing email header analysis. The first technique is the manual analysis where essentially one by one you got to analyze each and every line of the email header. And then 
try and identify the IP address of the person who sent that email to you. The second technique is obviously the automatic technique. So let me first show you the automatic technique. If you remember, I had shown you a website known as whatismyipaddress.com. So you copy the email headers that you want to trace and open your browser to whatismyipaddress.com and on the left hand side column there is a button which says trace email. So click on that link or click on that button and if you scroll down there is a particular space where you can actually paste your email headers. So let me paste the email headers in the space provided. So basically think about it, you don't need to do anything. It's as simple as copying and pasting the email headers of the email that you want to trace into this particular space provided and click on this get source button. And as soon as you click on the get source button, what is my IP address.com will take a few seconds to analyze your email headers and will then try to uh, show you the results. So if you look at the screen, you will probably need to scroll down. Now what is my IP address.com has done some kind of analysis where it has uh, highlighted all the important lines from the email header. See the email headers if you remember contain a lot of different lines. Some lines start with delivered to, other lines start with return path and so on. So what what is my IP address.com does is it basically highlights only the important lines and all the other not so important lines of the email header have been you know uh, shaded out or grayed out. So on the screen, if you look at the screen, some lines are grayed out, which means that they are not important and the highlighted ones are the ones that are important to your analysis in terms of tracing the email back to the sender. If you scroll down further, it has actually identified the exact IP address of the person who sent this email. So in this case, this particular email was sent from this IP address 169 dot 187 dot 186.105 and if you scroll down even further the exact location of that particular uh, sender has also been identified. So in this particular case the email that we are investigating was sent from United States uh, from a city called Reston and just to make it Hollywood style look pretty cool there is actually a Google map that has also been displayed at the bottom where this particular uh, point has been identified from where that particular that's the uh, email that we're investigating was actually sent. So that's how typically you analyze email headers and uh, in this example we use the automatic technique of analyzing email headers but essentially you could have also used the manual technique. You didn't necessarily need what is my IP address.com to do the analysis for you. So let me take all of you through the manual uh, technique of analyzing this email header. So let's go back to the notepad file where the email headers have been uh, are present. So let us do a manual analysis of this particular um, email header. So the trick, always remember the trick is whenever you have some email header with you, you need to eliminate all the lines that do not start with the word received. I repeat, eliminate each and every line in the email header that does not start with the word received. So if you look at the screen, I've highlighted a particular line. Does this line start with the word received? The answer is obviously no. This line does not start with the word received. So let me go ahead and delete this line. So similarly, one by one, I will look at each and every line of the email header and delete all those lines that do not start with the word received. 
So this line starts with the word two. So I don't uh, need it. So I can go ahead and delete it. So similarly, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Keep looking at the screen while I'm deleting all the lines that start with the word received. Now, finally, we have reached a line that actually does start with the word received. So I will not eliminate this line. So if you notice on the notepad file, this is actually this line is actually extending for seven or eight different rows. So you have to be very careful here because you may have eliminated this bottom one or two lines thinking that, oh, since it does not start with the word receive, I can eliminate it. But actually it is a continuation of this uh, of the line that actually starts with the word receive. So while analyzing, you have to be very careful to not eliminate a continuation of some line that started in some previous row, but is just continuing down to some bottom rows. So this line does actually contain the word received at the very beginning. So I will not eliminate it. So once you receive or once you reach a particular line that starts with the word receive, that's when you should stop eliminating the lines, right? So this is the first received line or the first line from the bottom that starts with the word received. So typically, I can get rid of everything else in the email header. So let me eliminate everything else. So we have this received line or we have the bottommost line which starts with the word received and within that we need to look for an IP address. So in this case we have identified a particular IP address from which this email was sent and please make a note of it this IP address is 163.37.174.38 right now let us compare this IP address with the what is my IP address dot com website. So if all of you look at the screen, uh, this IP address is the IP address from where the email seems to have originated, right? And this is the manual analysis IP address. And when we looked at, when we did an automatic analysis, using what is my IP address, we got this IP address. So if you notice, there is a slight difference. So the manual analysis IP address is 163.37.174.38 and the automatic analysis IP address is 169.187.186.105. So let us now try to trace this manual analysis IP address that we got. And how do you trace it? Once again, you can go to whatismyipaddress.com and click on IP lookup. In the left hand side, the top corner, there is a link which says IP lookup. And in this space provided, you can paste that uh, IP address. And next to the input field, there is a button which says look up IP address. So let me click on that button. So now what is happening is that what is my IP address dot com is trying to trace this particular IP address and find out where it originated. So in this case, the manual IP address or manual analysis IP address that we have found belongs to, to Citibank or Citicorp. So let me just copy paste it here. So the ISP is Citicorp Global Information Network. The location that is showing up is United States, New York. So location is US, New York. And if I scroll down further, it has identified the exact uh, location on the map as well. Now let us try to trace this uh, automatic analysis IP address using the IP lookup tool. So 
So again, if you notice, the ISP is city group. So city group, city corp, it's the same. And the location is Reston, Virginia, in the United States. So location is US, Virginia, Reston is the city. So the automatic IP address here, gave, uh, or the automatic analysis tool, that is what is my IP address.com, gave us an IP address that is different from the manual analysis IP address that we found. So which one is correct? I would say that whenever you are working on any kind of investigation case, do both. Because what has basically happened here is that one Citibank server communicate with, with another Citibank server to send this email out. So this email was sent from somewhere within Citibank, but it was used, I mean, both these servers were involved in sending uh, the, this email out. And for the, in, for, for the investigation, uh, the police in India will have to contact the American police because both these servers are located in the U.S., and then the U.S. police will have to contact Citigroup or the Citicorp Global Information Network and then try to find out the exact identity of the person who sent this email out. So do not blindly trust the automatic analysis uh, tools available. I would say that for, for any kind of investigation, both manual and automatic analysis is extremely necessary. So let me quickly do another quick example of uh, tracing of email headers. I'll open up another email header. Once again, the police has gotten in touch with you and has asked you for your help. And they have found a particular email header which they need your help in analyzing. So once again, let us do both manual and automatic analysis. So we'll do manual and automatic analysis uh, in terms of trying to find out the IP address of the person who sent this email and along with that we are also trying to find out the location and the ISP of that person. right? So for automatic analysis I am just going to copy the entire email header and go to which website? What is my IP address dot com so I go to whatismyipaddress.com. Let's go back to the uh, home page. Click on trace email. Scroll down. In this space provided, I'm going to paste the email header. And click on this button, get source. And as soon as I click on get source, within a few seconds, Uh, what, what this website has done is it has highlighted all the important lines. And whatever lines were not important, they have been grayed out. And if you look very carefully, it has highlighted only those lines that start with the word received, which is what we do in the manual analysis also. We start at the bottom part of the um, email header, and then we try to find out all the lines that start with the word received and usually the IP address in the bottom most received line is the IP address of the person who sent that email to you. So if I scroll down, it has identified the IP address of the person who sent the email. So in this case it is 115.114.244.24. Right, so let me copy this and paste it in this automatic analysis uh, row. So in case of automatic analysis, the IP address that we found was the following. And what is the location of this IP address? If you notice, it just shows India as the IP address, I mean as the location. It does not really show you an exact location or it does not tell you the city in which this uh, IP address is located. 
And if you look at the map as well, it, I'm not too sure what part of the country it is showing. So now if I zoom out, it is showing that this IP address is somewhere in Maharashtra. But I would not randomly or I would not blindly trust this location uh, that is sh uh, showing on the map. So in the, loca in the map it is showing that the IP address is in Maharashtra. But let us look at the result more carefully. If you look at the result more carefully, it says that the source host name, the source host name is 115.114.244.24.static-hyderabad.vsnl.net.in. That essentially means that this IP address belongs to VSNL, the ISP is VSNL, and the location happens to be Hyderabad. Or at least the connection has been, uh, has been activated from the Hyderabad VSNL server. So location approximately is Hyderabad, Andhra Pradesh, India, and the ISP that has been um, identified is VSNL. So that is the automatic analysis on, on the email header that we have received. Let us now do a manual analysis of the same email header and let us see what results do we get. So what do we do? Whenever you are doing a manual analysis, a common mistake is to start at the top of the email header. Never start at the top of the email header, always start at the bottom part of the email header. And once you are at the bottom of the email header, what do you do? you start eliminating all those lines that do not start with the keyword receive. So let's start doing that. I start eliminating all those lines that do not start with the word received. So finally we have found one line that starts with the word received. So let's keep it. Now let me show you even the line above that starts with the word received. So let's keep that as well. And then let's delete or eliminate all the other lines as well that do not start with the word received. So one by one I am eliminating all the lines that do not start with the word received. So here it's a very interesting email header. So based on the manual analysis logic, you only need to look at the bottommost received line. But if you look at the bottommost received line, it is the IP address mentioned there is 172.17.4.57. So let us try to do a lookup or a trace on that IP address. So I go back to what is my IP address.com. I click on IP lookup. And let's try to trace this IP address. So if you notice in the output it says that this is a private IP address. So if you remember in the, I think the first lecture of the AFCH course, we had discussed something known as private IP address or reserved IP addresses or IP addresses that are reserved for internal use. So anything that is in this range is usually reserved for internal private IP addresses. So the IP address that we have found using the manual analysis is actually an internal IP address or a private IP address. So we can't really do much with it. So this is a special case of manual analysis of email header where we have come across a private IP. So we need to eliminate that receive line. So whenever you uh, come across a receive line where the IP address is a private IP, you need to eliminate it. 
Similarly, now the bottommost received line becomes this line. And there is an IP address here. But if you look at that IP, again it's 172.17.4.57. I believe it's a private IP. If you're not sure, you can always test it by doing an IP lookup on it. So I copy paste it, click on lookup IP address and if you notice again it says it's a private IP. 